So in this video, I'm going to show you a very special MRI case of a shoulder injury, a labral injury, and this is something that you might not have come across yet. My name is Dr. Christoph Acton. I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist, and in my channel, I teach other radiologists MSK radiology, especially MRI. So this is a case that we discussed or that I discussed with one of my fellows from the virtual MSK fellowship program. And in case you're not familiar with the virtual MSK fellowship program, this is an advanced training program for board certified radiologists that want to kind of like improve their skills and strategies when it comes to musculoskeletal MRI. Now go check out the link if you're interested to learn more. There is a short uh, video and also like a free training where you'll get more information about what's actually the problem with MSK and why a lot of people have confidence issues and self-doubt when it comes to reading or reporting MSK MRI. And then you can also kind of like see a strategy on how to improve already by yourself. And also if you want to know more about the virtual fellowship, then there is some information there as well. But let's jump right in here into this case. Then I'll show you the images. Then we see the relevant, uh, or le the relevant references and literature. And then that's it basically. Okay, let's go. So this is the case. This was a direct MR orthography. And what I want to show you here is best seen on this image. So we can see direct orthography with a distension of the axillary recess here, although this is a PD sequent. Um, we, send, we can see a structure here inside the joint, which is a little bit confusing. And this is why this case was discussed in the fellowship program. And I mean, from the get-go, there are not many structures that are in question that can land in this region. So we are thinking about cartilage fragments, bone fragments, labrum, um, ligament potentially from the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex, but the capsule here is fine. There's no extravasation. So the ligament is kind of like out of the picture already. So it's either bone, labrum, or cartilage. And we can also have a look at the axial, maybe here on the thin slices. And when we start at the top, we go down Let's go down, 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 down. Now we start to see there is a tear at the contralabral junction. There's kind of, kind of like a fragment. There's the tear propagating here. The labrum itself is quite round. And then we have this finger-like structure that's going out here, very low signal intensity. Now, it's quite a shame that this protocol doesn't contain a non-fat set uh, sequence, but I don't think you know there would be any what kind of like a fatty structure would it be so it's probably true low signal in all sequences and not just some fat saturated uh i don't know a fatty structure uh, it doesn't look mass like in a sense of a neoplasm because it has this longitudinal appearance so basically there is not much left um, that comes in question so it's likely labrum or cartilage or a combination of the two but let's uh, now find out what that is and what how, how we can resolve this so the patient had a, sh a tr shoulder trauma. I think it was a even like a dislocation or a formal uh, or just a subluxation. There is no relevant hill sex, maybe just some subtle irregularity here, maybe a tiny one there. But let's go back to the lesion here. So it's something that's connected to the lower glenoid pole. It's coming out here. It's linear. And then when we go more anteriorly here, we can also see kind of like a, a disruption or a tear at the chondrolabial junction, which we can correlate to on the axial. So we can see this nicely here. I think we only need actually two images here. Um, we don't need three. Let me just get rid of a couple of those pictures. We don't need this. And then we just do three by three. OK. So now all three planes are helpful in something like this. We can see it's connected down here. So labrum, cartilage, that's probably what it is. And then here also here we can kind of like see it looks like a flap like this is the first thing that came to our mind it's a flap so but it's atypical because normally we have these tears where the like a banker tear or pertus lesion or even then later on alpsa where we have the displaced labrum down here but why is it going in the other direction. So like, why is the flap or the labrum now in this location? So that's a bit unusual. That's why there might be some confusion. So the sagittal here, let's have a look how this looks here. We can see also this is this tiny piece of um, labrum for the most part that's flipped over. Basically, it's a displaced flap, right? Now, the we're going to have a look at the, the nomenclature here, what the 
uh, literature is saying on how to call something like this. But it's a very unusual injury and just, uh, I think, interesting enough to show you here on this uh, video. Okay, and this is a good image here as well because you can see the subchronal plate and it looks like this one here is lifted off from the underlying plate and this flap should actually sit on here. Now, why the labrum here is kind of like rounded, maybe there was an older injury, uh, we were not able to find out, maybe there was a chronic situation where there were recurrent injuries, but this looks more like an acute now um, thing. But the fact that we have this rounded labrum here might indicate there is a pre-existing stuff, uh, like an acute and chronic injury here with this piece now flipped off. And this is the tear, and then we have this flap going anteriorly or enter inferiorly here. I think this is a nice, uh, if I scroll through here, you can nicely see this. So now you can see this is a very special injury. And obviously, whenever you see something, you wonder like what name should we give it? And I want to show you now the relevant, relevant literature here in a second. And just in case you're wondering how you can find this literature and references quickly, there is an actual strategy behind this. But I made an exclusive or separate video on how to find literature like this quickly in a very efficient manner. This is also something I teach in the Virtual MSK Fellowship, but I give you a glimpse on how one of these strategies might actually work. However, this video where I show you the actual way of finding stuff quickly is only for supporters of my YouTube channel. This can be either via Patreon or a YouTube channel membership and you can find this here. So the YouTube membership, you just go and click here. And for the Patreon, you just go on the Patreon page that I have, and then you can select one of the membership levels there. So this is an exclusive video for supporters of my YouTube channel, but you will still see the literature here just in a second. Okay, so let's have a look at the relevant references. So injuries like this have been published in the radiology literature here, an article from Skeletal Radiology in 2017, and then there is a second one in Arthroscopy in 2018. So let's have a look on what they call it. So glenoid labral flap tears, basically same nomenclature as in meniscus. So something to, yeah, to keep in mind. Now let's have a look at the pictures here quickly or First, the conclusion, glenoid labral flap tears have distinct imaging characteristics that may aid in their identification. That's what I showed you in the case. Their presence should prompt careful evaluation of a glenoid articular cartilage uh, defects because obviously that was also something we saw. It's not just the labrum that's been flipped over, but we also had this delamination and this tear of the controllable junction. And yeah, so they have a high... Um, stability and often need surgical intervention, as you can imagine. And so this is a article here and uh, 19 patients with flap type tears. So let's go here and just go through the images and just compare how this looks like. So this is a very similar case to what I have shown you here only uh, a couple of minutes ago. So you can see same controllable tear at, you know, also cartilage affected, then the flap, same direction. It's not a loose body or like a like a bony structure and also this very exact same image. So this is basically the same case, right? Fell on his arm, not even a dislocation, just kind of like a delamination or shearing injury of the whole thing, leading into a displaced flap of tissue extending into the axillary joint recess. And this is the arthroscopic image that shows this displaced flap of tissue here, which is still attached to the inferior labrum or glenoid rather and it's going down into the recess. So very nice. So let's go to the, the other uh, images just to get a little bit of a, a feel of how that might look like. Now here, very interesting. This is now in a posterior region and inferiorly. So kind of like a, if you want like one flap going this way and the other flap going down this way, kind of like a break of the ring if you want to. So very interesting with a radial component. Then here, also like a GLAD lesion, um, articular disruption here, then flap hanging down here, very interesting. And then here, something similar here, also cartilage delaminated, lifted off a little bit, and down below we see some adjacent labral flap here as well. Okay, so that's very interesting. So go read this article, I have the link in the description below this video. Uh, you can download it, it's for free in skeletal radiology. And then the second article here is in arthroscopy from February 2018. And um, so basically, 
they also looked at the same thing. And what I like here is they call it the glenoid labral articular teardrop lesion. So here again, back to the case, and you can see it really has a little bit like a teardrop-like shape on this coronal view, and this is the denomination cartilage affection here as well. Yeah, so teardrop-like, I like the name quite a bit. So the glenoid label articular teardrop lesion controllable injury with distinct magnetic resonance imaging findings. Now, they also had a larger sample here, 36 patients, and then um, we can maybe have a look at the article here as well. I can't show, show you the article, it's behind the paywall, but um, yeah, anyways, what I also think is interesting here that they bring in yet another abbreviation now, like the GLAD lesion, not a D, but a T for teardrop, glenoid labral articular teardrop lesion. Now it's getting just confusing with all these abbreviations, but yeah, I, I like the fact that we can call it a teardrop lesion or a labral flap like in the previous article, glenoid labral flap tears, displaced flap or a teardrop lesion. So I hope you found this very interesting like I did. And yeah, if you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button and also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.